It is now my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, and that is Darren Thomas, the Chief Executive Officer of Thomas Foods International. Thanks very much, Isabel. Um, our guests from overseas, um, the Premier, uh, all of our distinguished guests, and Isabel, you did such a great job introducing everyone. At the start, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, AgTech is something I'm actually quite interested in personally but also how technology is affecting our business. Now, I will be talking a little bit about the project that um, Isabella discussed at the end of it, but what I thought I'd do today is also just reflect on you know, the innovation that's actually affecting our business, because yes, everyone wants, everyone wants to hear about and look at exciting uh, robots and what's happening in a food processing plant, but probably what's had the biggest impact on our business is actually the supply chain or the innovation of the supply chain. Um, as we said earlier. So I'm going to look at that and then come back to sort of what's happening at the Murray Bridge project. You'll have to excuse my voice, too many flights and too many, uh, too many uh, uh, talks of late. But um, we'll, because really has been a business that's a, like a global business. Um, you are literally 24 seven and the impacts that it's had on our decision making as a company and why we've done what we've done since the 90s has really been an outcome of this. But I wanted to introduce a theory, theory or an, an actual outcome that many of you would be aware of, particularly the people that are surrounding the room here, of convergence. Now, you'll see our old friend up there, Maxwell Smart, the old shoe phone and the things that we saw in some of the things, the old TV, the gramophone. But really, this convergence of technologies is really what's driven or being a lot of the foundation of technology. You know, as, as I'm standing here now, I'm, Apple Watch, someone's just text me, you know, you, you're constantly, you're constantly uh, available. But this convergence of technology is actually allowed um, us as a, as a society to advance. Now, um, there's plenty of benefits of that, but as I said, um, you really live in a 24-7 world and um, the demands of that. So I just thought I'd have a really, really quick look at the supply chain and how that is really uh, specific to our business. Um, if I look here, one of the things that uh, Australia was as well known for is our National Livestock Identification Scheme, where all of our uh, cattle are now uh, basically identified, so we can give whole life traceability. Now, the, the whole reason for wanting to obviously optimise our supply chain is, is, comes back to productivity and profits. Now, we all enjoy a wonderful life here in Australia, we really do, but it's a very high cost place to do business. And you know, I can make some comparisons in that with what we operate our businesses in other parts of the world. But if I look at the supply chain and agriculture, it's changed dramatically in the last 30 years. Uh, how we sell livestock, obviously today, um, animal welfare standards are important. So we've seen the advent of different forms of selling livestock rather than just the, the normal traditional uh, sale yard system, um, Auctions Plus, for example. I mean, they really were pioneers in this area. It started some 30 years ago when we first sold. And I remember when I started in the industry, it was a very manual system. Or when my father, coming from a livestock family, you know, the, the trip down to Narra Court, then stopping six times on the way home to the telephone box, or if there's any agents in the room, you know, countless hours ringing your clients. Now every bit of data is just readily available. Um, you know, livestock market reporting, uh, the end of the night. Um, so it's really changed and sped up the process. Now there's lots of great examples of some of these emerging technologies around the room. One of the ones that we use in some of our farms has been AgriWeb. Um, and uh, that's really allowed us to communicate. Now, uh, if you talk to a few of my farm managers, they might not be so, whilst they really loved it and, and, and embraced it, uh, I found a little area in there we can actually sort of shoot off some emails and tasks. So they've sort of got their work cut out. They tried to hide that one from me. But um, the information, you know, just driving around the paddock, finding out what's going, the history, livestock. You know, I'm about to make decisions. I can be sitting overseas with a customer now and talking all about our great animal welfare traceability standards and that. So it's really shaped the way we as a company have operated and continue to operate. And every step of that supply chain, even the way we market um, our food now, uh, because we've got such wonderful uh, products here in Australia, but we're still only very small on the scale. We may be a, a large exporter, but we're still small in the scale. We've only, we can really, as a country, only feed about 60 million people. So we can look after ourselves and a few others. So the old uh, economics of that is you want to keep, you know, concentrate on premiumisation of, of your products. So 
you know, through this, we've been able to look at, you know, just selling our products differently, but the technology that we're able to now and tell that message um, is, is incredible. It's shaping the way the whole time everyone through social media has an opinion. You know, they don't like something or there's an article written, you know straight away there's direct feedback. One of the really exciting things that I've um, seen and we just completed last year was blockchain, and I won't go into, we don't have the time today, but you know, this uh, traceability thing is one of the key things. So not only has Australia a wonderful product, but there are, we've got some competitors. If anyone goes to Argentina, Uruguay, um, you know, there's some magnificent products coming out of there. But this whole theme of traceability um, is amazing. So we were one of the first people to actually track, and I don't like really the word paddock to plate, but, but uh, our products right through the system, right through the retail customer. And I can tell you, I spend you know, basically half of my life out there somewhere in some retail environment globally and our customers today, and particularly the younger generation, really want to know. But it also gives us the advantage of our provenance, um, which is incredibly important, one of Australia's main mainstays. So when we're in some of the Asian markets in particular, um, really protecting that IP and provenance is, uh, is incredibly important. Now, uh, most of you would know these two people, if you don't, Jack Maher and Jeff Bezos, They've single-handedly had some of the biggest impacts on business in general, but they're impacting my business. So if I look at technology, whilst it is obviously a huge advantage to our business, but it's also driving our thoughts and our um, future plans, we've got to be aware of what's happening. And I'll talk of that from a customer base, and, and that's really at the end of the day, because my customers ultimately, for the people in primary production, they're your customers, OK? I, I really sit across the middle. I mean, we've had to sort of... Uh, optimise the supply chain, change the way we're doing it. We're doing more direct business with customers. But these two gentlemen and their companies, coupled with different sites of social media, I mean, they've changed the way retail uh, is operating. So the biggest part of our business is retail globally um, and here also in our domestic market. But I just want to show you a, uh, a short little video of uh, what's happening now, and that's really determines how I've got to now react as a company because if this is what my customers are doing, I've got to make sure my business stays relevant in that supply chain. Four years ago, we started to wonder, what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. Your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. So you can see, um, and you know, our previous keynote spoke of some of these uh, technologies, how they're now being adopted into the wider market. And you know, we won't go on about Amazon, but as a customer of ours, it's really shaping the way that we have to do business. Um, in our Philadelphia processing plant, you know, we've, we have a huge Amazon distribution store down uh, about a mile away from where we are. You know, we've got two hour order, you know, our Amazon Prime customers, if they want a steak or a chop or whatever it might be, we've got two hours to produce it. So we've got to shape our business around it. And, and convenience, technology has allowed people to become, I like to say, sometimes more impatient. Uh, we want everything tomorrow. 
Um, you've seen things. So that led us down to our sort of consumer range, our Thomas Farms kitchen, which is all designed about convenience. Now, in Australia, one of the biggest challenges we have, obviously, is this big country with not a lot of people and the logistics of getting products around is incredibly uh, challenging, I'll say. And we did have a, a large international come to Australia and decide, no, well, the logistics challenge was too much for them. So they decided to exit. But um, that thing of convenience, so today, and there still is people wanting to shop. So again, that Amazon and Whole Foods type in the US, there's still people wanting the bricks and mortar shopping, but you've got to have that convenience range. We saw the advent of Uber Eats, another sort of coming from technology again, people uh, take away, you know, getting at home. So when I saw one of the biggest brands in the world decide, well, we have to be part of this, you know it's a momentum shift. So again, here I am, I'm a meat processor. I've got to remain relevant. I can't ignore this. If I think I'm just going to process an animal, put it in a box and just forget it, you know, we're not going to be here in, in two years' time. So I've got to be thinking the whole time, how do we stay relevant uh, to our customers? So, we were one of the first, well, the first uh, company to put fresh uh, meat on Uber Eats. So you can actually, now, we've completed that trial here and it's really exciting. So we'll be uh, looking to roll that out. And, um, but again, trying to give that bit of, uh, I guess, halfway point between maybe the modern take or traditional takeaway and actually still cooking a home cooked meal. And we're seeing those sort of sales, you know, go through the roof. But I'm even not, um, that against when we look at innovation in uh, food or in our thing is looking at uh, some of the plant-based opportunities, uh, alternative meat, whatever you want to go. So for me, uh, I get asked a lot, do, you know, people thinking that you're threatened by this, is this going to take? No, for me, I mean, as a capitalist, I think it's a great opportunity for more sales. Uh, this is a company we develop uh, in the EU or with, uh, in the Netherlands and, you know, these sales are growing out. Still very small, but um, globally. So we've got to constantly be trying to innovate and using the technology. And it's interesting, um, as I move on to the next part about the food processing, cer certainly artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, machine vision, all those things you saw even in Amazon Go are gonna play a huge role in our business. We're just on the cusp in the meat processing sector, I think of a huge productivity step or a huge gain. Now it's been around, I've been involved in a trial program for nearly 20 years, and we're just starting to see some of these technologies and the great thing is they're going to all be able to integrate backwards into many of the suppliers that are around the room here and also forwards. But I guess I can't go past, you know, talking about the uh, issue we went through a couple of years ago, but the exciting opportunity um, that provided us. So I'll just show you a quick little video for those who may not be aware of what happened to us in uh, two years ago, but the exciting times that we've got ahead of us and some of that technology that will be involved. An inferno rips through the Murray Bridge Meatworks. 1,400 workers left in limbo. The abattoir fire sent shockwaves through Murray Bridge. Almost 24 hours on, firefighters are still trying to extinguish the blaze. Firefighters will remain here into tomorrow. Murray Bridge community is rallying around those affected. Of course, the biggest concern is the abattoir's massive workforce and their future. My main concern and focus is the welfare and wellbeing of our staff. Company boss Darren Thomas says the plant will be rebuilt but how long that takes is anyone's guess. We will be committed, we will be rebuilding. Today, I can confidently say that there's been 340 positions created here with a second shift at Lobethal. Already we've placed a lot of these people in employment and that's only a bit over two weeks ago. I think that's an extraordinary effort and a, and a great effort by many people involved. We're here to support our employees um, and we know that this is going to be a monumental task. Today we instigate a major employment campaign in Tamworth for local residents and that's in order for us to be able to continue to meet our uh, ongoing custom requirements but also support the livestock of the, the region. Four months have gone by very quickly so we are trying to get things up and back and running as quickly as possible. The well-being of our people, as I said on the doorsteps day one, was my most important goal and still is today. And the support of Murray Bridge community at the moment has been outstanding and probably their darkest hour for a while. So um, I would like to say a big thank you. Certainly uh, has made our job easier. We're very focused on returning Murray Bridge back to the jewel in the crown it was. 
The rebuild here at Thomas Foods Factory may be months from starting, but Australia's third biggest meat processor has its sights firmly set on the future. I guess what excites us is the future. Um, it's a little unclear still at the moment, but one thing I know, and all we can go on is our past history and what we've done in the last 20 years, and uh, I'm very excited about what I see in the future. We are certainly committed to rebuild and whatever we do will be bigger, better and stronger for that. So that day's come. Um, I can assure you on the morning of the fire or the next day it was probably a little unclear but we had that commitment. And out of all that um, challenge that we faced, it's given us one of the most amazing opportunities to build something quite unique. Uh, no one is building processing plants from scratch in the world anywhere now, the multi-species nature. So I'm going to be able to just show you a couple of short videos before we have to wind up this morning. But um, in food processing, as I said, I think we're just on the cusp. We've been a very traditional labour-intensive industry, which will still always require skilled labour. But some of the imaging that we're able to get, the speeds of production that we need to operate. So, Whilst this will just be a bit of a starting point, um, I'm going to show you a quick flyover um, and we are literally ready to uh, start announcing tenders and so on. And then I'm going to actually finish with a short video that will show you some of the equipment that will be going in there. You'll notice there is a lack of people, but 10 years ago this would have been done with uh, many hands and, and in any agricultural business, obviously finding labour is extremely challenging. So I'll just show you these uh, couple of quick videos and then I'll be able to answer some questions uh, later on today. So there's a quick look on the outside and you know it has only been two years ago since we've been working on this but to get, take a look at what we're going to be seeing in the inside of the plant. Uh, Scott Automation have worked with our industry for as I said nearly, uh, two, nearly two decades and some of the uh, robotics and cobotics is quite exciting for what we're doing, you know animal welfare, uh, a lot of the just food safety. So um, what I'll show you here is just a little bit of a snapshot of bits and pieces of the technology that have just been implemented in other plants, but no one's actually put it all together. So it's something we're quite um, excited about.
we're really excited about the future. Uh, I also want to, I guess, now put the challenge back to not only the Australian government, but our government. I'm a big fan of the Israeli model and, and the way they are world class, the way they've got support. But you see it's the whole system. It's just not about governments giving handouts. It's also about the private sector taking risk and backing our entrepreneurs. South Australia has a great history of entrepreneurism here, and particularly in the agricultural sector. So I'm incredibly excited about it. I thank the government for taking the lead and putting this inaugural conference on, and I wish you, I hope you have an amazing day because there's some fantastic entrepreneurs in the room, and thanks for having me. Thank you.